If you're one of those Canadians that believes pumpkin growing has gotten too competitive in this country, then stay away from Pembroke, Ontario, home to the fourth annual Pembroke Pumpkin Weigh-In and Boat Race. There's a lot of cash on the line here today as we find out who has the heaviest pumpkin and who has the fastest pumpkin. And of course, who gets sent back to the patch, empty-handed, crushed, and looking for answers. And now I'm joined by the man behind all the pumpkin festivities, Brian Hughley. Hello, Brian, how are you? Great, Rick. Okay, so today we're gonna see pumpkins, we're gonna, we're gonna weigh pumpkins, and then we're gonna race pumpkins. Rain or shine? Rain or shine. That's what we're gonna do. You're gonna get wet either way, so it really doesn't matter. We're gonna, this is food you can play with. You can grow your own boat. And of course, at any ranch or farm, you always see old farm equipment lying around. I don't know what this does exactly. I guess it was a, some sort of. <laughs> and that's how we won the War of 1812. <laughs> what is this? That would be a long gourd. That's a long gourd. Long gourd, and we just had a new world record set out here. No, where? How long is it? 128 and 9 16 inches. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to mount it and put it over the fireplace? Or? I'm going to dry it out. I'm going to get the seeds out of it. The seeds are... And you'll be able to sell those seeds? Well, I'll give them away. Like you give them away? That's right. Other growers. Right. Yeah, especially Canadian ones. Right. Okay. So you're the pumpkin judge. You're also the squash judge, are you? I'm the everything judge today. You are the judge and jury here today. We're all part of the Great Pumpkin Commonwealth. What's that? It's the governing body of giant pumpkin growers. There is a governing body of giant pumpkin growers. That's correct. They, How many they... former Liberal cabinet ministers are on that? I'm, bet, I'm betting a lot. It's got to be 60 or 70 pounds, eh? Well, I'd say over 1,100. Over 1,100 pounds. Yeah. yeah. I've never seen a vegetable you need to airlift before. So uh, what are we looking for here? We're looking for holes, we're looking for rot, and we're trying to remove all the dirt that's on the bottom. Because the dirt weighs. Adds weight to it. And you don't want to add any weight. Don't and add if anything. there's any holes, someone could have shoved something in the hole. It's disqualified. Well, you got to take your foot off it. What's that? You got to take your foot off it, Rick. <laughs> 1,145 pounds. What's going to happen to this pumpkin? Will it move on to other competitions in other parts of the country or the world? No, you're going to ask Todd behind you if you could use his pumpkin as a boat in the race. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. The heaviest pumpkin. Absolutely. Now, it's big. It's big. It's good looking. It's very good. Will it float? It'll float. Definitely. Are you sure? I guarantee it. So we're just going to be very careful as we... Uh... Friday the 13th, part 27, Jason makes five. Okay, we are now lakeside. The tension has ratcheted up, but I have a secret weapon, and it's Sarah Bowdens. Hello, Sarah. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Sarah, tell the people what you do, Sarah. I compete in whitewater slalom kayaking, and I'm a 2008 Olympian. She is an Olympian, and she will be sharing the pumpkin with me, won't you? In close quarters, yes. We are teammates. <laughs> yeah. You're well, the ringer. I hope so. Where are you from? Pembroke. Look at that. We can't, we can't lose. This boat is top-notch. We got this used from the British Navy. I'm from Newfoundland. We are small boat people. Winston Churchill himself called the Newfoundlanders the best small boatsman in the entire world. This seems like a totally sane thing to do. <laughs> it's orange and it's sinking. I feel like Jack Layton. Now, our big competition is some local radio personalities who mm. apparently have been in training and local member of parliament Cheryl Gallant. And I feel bad because Cheryl Gallant actually wears a muzzle. Stephen Harper put a muzzle on her about three years ago. Mm. She hasn't spoken since. Silent, but didn't now, if she goes in the water, will she make a noise? <laughs> Who's going in the front? <laughs> we really should have worked. This is like our honeymoon. We just don't know what to do. We don't know how it works. Are <laughs> oh, you going to sit up there? <laughs> Come back a little. <laughs> oh. Hello, Cheryl. Hello. How are you doing? I'm just great, then. Yes. How, how do you feel about your chances? Oh. I don't want to harm the local member of parliament. Not really. <laughs> All right, you got to lean forward. The things you do for politics, eh? Right up there off. Oh! Oh, there you go. How's 
What's Cheryl doing? <laughs> My Jake stroke is doing nothing. I can tell. Did she turn around? Focus! <laughs> Sarah, for being my teammate. No problem. Here we are in Pembroke, Ontario, celebrating all things pumpkin-related and all things nautical. No wonder the entire world wants to live in Canada. <laughs> <laughs>